Hello and welcome to Star Citizen. My name is Even Lease, and today on 10 Minutes More or Less Ship Review on the road to Invictus, we have behind me the Avenger Titan. <laughs> it's a pretty cool looking ship. Let's go ahead and get into it. To this ship here now from the get-go you're gonna go ahead and already see that the gun is missing on the front for some reason I put the ship away and then when I respawned it it wasn't there anymore uh, I have no idea I don't know why um, <laughs> I'm sure if I went and got it repaired it would be right back where it was and that's fine whatever I'll show you what it looks like with the gun you just saw it here uh, a moment ago in the intro as well as right now because we're gonna talk about the Avenger Titan, and the stats that come with the ship compared to other starter ships. So let's go ahead and do that. Starting off with the price. The pack for this ship is $75. It is a standalone ship at $60, and you can buy it in-game for $1,358,280 in the city of Lorville. So it's a pretty up there uh, cost for a starter pack so you definitely have to make sure that it's worth it for you and everything that you're looking to do in Star Citizen uh, and so once I get into the interior of the ship and kind of go through the stats you'll find out pretty quick if it's something you're looking for or not uh, especially with other ships available like the Cutter and others uh, like the Nomad if you're going to really be aiming that high on a price so starting off let's talk with the damage here so the DPS is 1,858 stock because of the two laser cannons here on the side. And then, of course, the Gatling gun on the front, which is obviously missing. But as you can see in the videos that are displaying right now, they do, you know, output quite a bit of firepower. And that's pretty amazing. Having 1,858 DPS for a starter ship is insane. So this is already a very viable ship for PvE and even PvP, depending on what you're facing, which is fantastic. And it's got a very retro look to it. So can't go wrong with that. Now, if you were to compare that to the Cutter, the Cutter has 900, uh, no, sorry, 296 DPS. The C8X Pisces has 236 DPS. The Mustang Alpha has 368 DPS. And the Sealin has 393 DPS. So the DPS on the Titan here is the best out of all the ones that I just listed. Oh, and the Aurora MR at 242 DPS. So you can't go wrong with the damage that this ship outputs. And that's because the gun on the front is a size 4 Revenant Gatling. And then the two guns on the side are size 3 Omsky 9 laser cannons. So it's pretty awesome. Love it. Um, they just, everything looks fantastic on this ship. And it operates really well when it comes to combat. Now, I will say, in atmosphere, this thing is, uh, it flies okay. <laughs> It's not the greatest in maneuverability. So not the greatest maneuverability in this ship, but that's, you know, something you just have to, you know, comes to terms with, with a ship with this much power. Obviously, the, it has to have a downside, right? Uh, outside of that, let's talk about the shields on this ship. It does have 3,000 shield HP, and it is a bubble shield. So just like in all my other reviews, bubble shield means when someone is attacking you, it takes from the entire shield health pool when you are hit. So be very wary of that and how much, you know, damage you are taking. Now you have on the other ships that were mentioned, the Cutter has 1500 shield, C at X Pisces, obviously at 1500, and the Mustang Alpha, Sulin, and Aurora at 3000 shield. So there's some pretty good options out there. They're all at the 3000 or less mark, which isn't terrible. And then you have on this ship 11,900 health points. So... Not the greatest amount of health points for a ship at this price. Um, I feel like there's definitely better options. A really quick pause, and I don't mean to interrupt the video, but 
I did want to just tell you that there is two access points on this ship. One is here, right here on the cockpit, and there's one on the rear ramp. I didn't mention it during my review, so I'm just throwing it in there now so I don't forget. And so you know. You know, health-wise, right? But are you going to get everything else the same with that? So you got you to gotta know what you're going to you know give away and what you're going to take from owning certain ships. So with this ship... Not only do you have a fantastic combat profile uh, and being able to put down some major damage, but you also have the ability to have, you know, carry internal things. As you can see on screen, I'm not going to show you just yet, but you see the Mirai Pulse is inside this ship, which is phenomenal. Uh, but we'll get to that here in just a moment. Now, if you were to talk about other ships and their health pools, obviously the Cutter has the most at 17,100. The C8X Pisces has 6,250. The Mustang Alpha, 8,731. The Suyulin at 11,740. And the Aurora MR at 5,740. So options are limited if you want a higher health pool. But this being the, you know, second best health pool out of the ships I just named isn't terrible. Especially since you're putting out all that damage. Now, going into other things that this ship can do for you. It does carry eight cargo which i will show you in the back here in just a second while the other ships cutter at four the pisces at four mustang at four the suyland at six and the aurora at three so this ship carries the most cargo so if you're looking to start an early cargo career and you don't want to spend over a hundred dollars this isn't a terrible option for a starter pack um, especially since it can defend itself which is fantastic now, before I enter this ship, I'm going to open the door here really quick. But before I enter, I'm going to let you know that these engines do put out quite a bit of power. Uh, you can go up to 260 SCM on a normal SCM speed. Uh, and then a forward boost at 610 and a backwards boost at 280. Now, comparing that to the other ships, the Cutter, obviously, at 180 SCM max. The Mustang Alpha at 225, the C8X Pisces at 220, the Suyulin at 225, and the Aurora MR at 225. So out of all the options, this is your fastest, which is, <laughs> again, awesome. Uh, nav speed is 1,425. So again, that is also the fastest option out of all of them. Uh, I'm not going to go into the numbers on the rest of them, but just know this is the fastest nav ship out of the options I've given you in previous comparisons. Now, quantum fuel, this has the worst out of all of them at 612 quantum fuel compared to the rest of them. The cutter at 1,960, the C8X Pisces 742, Mustang Alpha at 671, the Suyulin at 2,900, and the Aurora MR sitting at 671 as well. So that's a really big bummer. It means you cannot go far at all without having to refuel. You know, make sure you stop at a station and do what you need to do to get fuel. And you have to do it often. And you also cannot take long jumps if you do not upgrade your quantum drive. So realize that from the get-go, you will just have to be very familiar with jumping station to station to station to get across the system. And then once bigger systems come out, you'll see again that <laughs> it's just going to be kind of a pain. So... Now, you do also have four missiles on this ship. It's four size two Ignite 2 missiles, as you can see right here. Two of them on each wing. Phenomenal, phenomenal. You know, it's always good to have some missiles. And the location is, you know, your normal location for missiles on any sort of spaceship or aerial aircraft. Now, if we head into the cargo bay area here, I'm going to tell you, you know, right now that this can fit a Mirai Pulse. It could fit multiple. You could probably put one, two, three, four, probably four in here, honestly. Maybe even more than that if you're really going to shove a ton of them in here but if you want to leave some space to walk around and do stuff you could fit quite a few of these in here and that is just so cool being able to fit any sort of ground vehicle in a ship like this is just such an advantage and there is zero struggle getting this into this ship by the way so know that know that it's just fantastic i do suggest having a pulse if you're going to have this ship and you're going to you know do any sort of ground operation this is a good combo to have now, continuing on, there is no components pass, no gold standard pass. You cannot access any of the components. There's no button panels to access the doors or anything. It's all kind of just walk through here in motion sensing. 
You do have a bed that you could sit and lay in and bed log out of, and that's pretty much it. The rest of this is just not active at the time. So I'm assuming you're gonna have some sort of operating fridge here uh, and then other you know, necessities and tools. And to access your internal storage, you just have to press I on the keyboard to go ahead and do that. So no components, no nothing. That's just where it's at with that. And then, you know, you get no, <laughs> no nothing. You know, you don't have any sort of uh, gun rack. You don't have any sort of physicalized anything in this ship. So that's, you know, it's a high price point to not have that accessibility and gold standard. So, you know, take that into account in your decision. All right, getting into the cockpit, you just have to, you know, you have to understand where the rating's gonna come in here. So you have a great amount of DPS because the weapons are fantastic. You have a good amount of shield for a starter ship. You have a decent amount of health points. You have good cargo at eight. Your speed is pretty fantastic given the new operating modes. And then your quantum fuel is trash. Your maneuverability, not the best. Uh, your price point, also kind of high given the fact that there's no components pass, no gold standard pass, uh, and you're missing a lot of the functionality that the ships of today have, like the Nomad, the Cutter, uh, the C8X Pisces. All these ships have, you know, weapons racks and, you know, a, more of a physicalized inventory where you have to actually go up and touch something to access it. So with that, this ship is going to get a 8 out of 10 for now it is an 8 out of 10 because it does need that components pass and the really the biggest negative is just the quantum fuel tank honestly the maneuverability as it is a starter ship not the greatest maneuverability but that's okay let me know what you guys think of this ship down in the comments below do you have one do you fly one are you going to get one what do you really think of the titan series i know there's quite a few variants with this ship so we'll we'll get into those variants later down the line Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.